Hello and welcome to my channel. This video lecture is on preconditioned conjugate gradient descent. Today's video was requested by Ethan. If you have suggestions for other topics you would like me to cover, please leave your topic suggestions in the comments below. So let's get started. First, we will talk about condition number. We can define the condition number of a matrix as the ratio between the max eigenvalue and min eigenvalue of that matrix. Remember that the eigenvectors of a general n by n matrix point in n orthogonal directions, and the eigenvalue corresponds to how much the vector is stretched in that direction. Therefore, the condition number represents how oblong the contour graph of the matrix is. We can see some examples here. When we look at the identity matrix, this is the smallest that the condition number can ever get because the max and min eigenvalues are the same. In the case of the identity matrix, we can see that the ISO contour graphs are circular. When we look at a matrix with a larger condition number, we can see that the ISO contours are stretched along one eigenvector significantly more than the other, creating this oblong shape in its isocontour graph. How does this relate to gradient descent? In general, minimizing along the gradient is not very efficient when the condition number of A is large because the gradient is very weak along the eigenvector with the smallest eigenvalue. Instead of converging quickly to the minimum value, conjugate gradient descent keeps bouncing back and forth between the orthogonal directions and converges very slowly. We can see this in action with the example here. With the same starting point and number of steps, gradient descent is able to get much closer to the true optimum for the function represented by the red cross when the matrix A has a low condition number. Preconditioning, then, is the idea of transforming the solution space to make it easier to solve. In our case, we want to make it easier to apply gradient descent. In our example, we want to take Ax equals b, where the matrix A has a high condition number, and transform it by multiplying a matrix M to solve Max equals Mb, such that the matrix Ma has a low condition number. This basically happens when the matrix MA is approximately the identity matrix, and we can achieve this by defining the matrix M to be approximately the inverse of A. Since MA has a low condition number, it is significantly easier to solve and will converge faster with gradient descent. So how can we generate the preconditioner matrix M? There are many techniques to generate M that you can choose between depending on the properties of A. But in this video lecture, we will only discuss incomplete LU factorization. A quick reminder of LU factorization. If A can be written as the product of a lower triangular matrix L and an upper triangular matrix U, we can use this to more easily solve for X. In our case, we have PA equals LU and we can take the original solution Ax equals b and transform that into Lux equals pb. Given this substitution, we can then solve two separate linear equations, Ly equals pb and then Ux equals y. Because L and U are triangular matrices, these new equations can be solved using forward and backward substitution which is much easier. This, in practice, ends up being significantly faster because we only need to compute the LU decomposition once, and we can repeatedly solve the equation for different values of B. So in practice, even though we are doing the decomposition and solving two linear equations, this approach is much faster because the new equations are significantly easier to solve. The problem with LU factorization is that even though the matrix A can be sparse, its LU decomposition might result in non-sparse triangular matrices. 
This means that there are a lot more computations that are needed in order to solve the resulting equations. In this case, we can approximate the LU decomposition by setting all the values that are near zero to zero, forcing the sparsity in the decomposition. This results in incomplete LU factorization. Hence, we have A is approximately equal to L times U, where we have taken the original dense LU matrices and forced sparsity. The inverse of A is approximately equal to U inverse, L inverse, and we can then use this as our preconditioner matrix M, which will then be approximately the inverse of A. We then solve the linear equation MAx equals MB, and this is going to be much easier to solve since, as we said before, MA is approximately equal to the identity matrix. Now let's take a look at the example with preconditioning and without preconditioning. On the left, we have the original matrix and the original solution of gradient descent, where we could not converge to the true optimum value. When we apply the preconditioner for this matrix, we can see that in three steps, we are much closer to the optimum value than when we try to solve the problem without using preconditioner. All the code for this video lecture is located in this collab. You can find a link to the collab in the description box below. I prefer to use collab because I can intersparse text along with the Python code to give a little bit more context to what is happening. Additionally, I know that many of you like to use MATLAB and by writing the code in Python, it will force you to translate that code into MATLAB and hopefully learn a little bit more about these techniques. If you like this video, please leave suggestions for future topics in the comments section below. I can present more topics along machine learning, computer vision, computer science, and other mathematics topics, depending on what is interesting to you. So please let me know what you are interested in. And thank you for watching this video.